On this week's edition of Politicats, we'll discuss the winning ASG candidates' plans coming out of the election, as well as a controversy over the election that came to light earlier this afternoon. We'll take a look at the national presidential race in the upcoming New York primary and go over what we can expect from campaigns for the Illinois Senate seat. This is Politicat, your political news right now. In an incredibly close election, Christina Salento squeezed past opponent Joji Syed last week to secure the Associated Student Government Presidency. I'm Eric Miller and I'm joined by NNN reporter Andrew Merica and former Northwestern College Democrats President Quentin Halbronner. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Now, first some breaking news. It was revealed earlier today that a member of the ASG Election Commission allegedly leaked information about the vote to Salento before close before polls closed on Friday. We reached out to Salento for comment and she said, quote, we were told by a member of the election commission at lunch Friday that the vote was very close between the two campaigns. We were the only campaign given that information, which is obviously unfair as both teams should be given equal access to those sorts of updates. We did not ask for this information. It was an unsolicited update. The election commission has determined our campaign did not commit a violation and is investigating the individual further. We know how important this election was to campus and will continue to work with the Election Commission to ensure confidence in the results. We will keep you updated as this story progresses. Now, Salento and Vincent ran a campaign central, centered on marginalized students. Andrew, uh, you sat down with them this week to discuss how they plan to deliver on their campaign promises. Let's take a look at that tape now. How will you two follow through with some of those big ideas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, first, like, I mean, I think I would like be absolutely ecstatic if we accomplished every single thing that's on our platform but like that's never been done probably in the history of ever so like <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna be able to be the ones that do that um, but I think that what I would want to do is um, try to make sure that we're prioritizing the things that we think are the most important mm -hmm. um, and the things that are, are most urgent um, as well as the things that have already been you know kind of getting started so um, for us like I think what we bring that's that's unique is like this this mentality of, like unionizing not governing is one thing that we've been talking about a lot and it's kind of one of our buzzwords so I think that um, with that mentality, we're saying that like we're not just going to go into meetings ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to be two student voices, you know, representing students. We're going to actively try to rally students around the types of projects that we want to pursue because we know that they're really important for the student body, um, and we want to create like um, a unified voice for a bunch mm -hmm. of campus to to get involved with the work that ASG does and to push for the change that needs to be seen. Now, over 4,000 votes were cast in this year's election, a nearly 35% increase from last year. Salento, won, uh, Salento and Vincent won by a narrow margin with only 81 votes more than Syed and Baskaran. A close race for sure. Now, Andrew, what do these numbers say about this year's election? You know, Eric, I really think that these numbers speak to the strength of the campaigning that, that both of these, honestly, both of these campaigns have done. Uh, the social media presence uh, from the Christina and Max campaign was absolutely plastered all over every Northwestern student's uh, Facebook feed. You could see Christina and Max graphics in, in the Facebook banners, as well as profile pictures, as well as Joji and Archie. And honestly, I think the campaigns did an excellent job of reaching out and explaining their message to the students. There were three debates, and in each debate, um, campaigns have the opportunity to reiterate uh, what their messages were and make sure that students really knew what, who they were voting for and what they stood for. And is it possible that uh, the increased attention and increased turnout had anything to do with the national election this year? You know, I think everybody is in an election mindset. Um, I feel like with Bernie Sanders, especially on a liberal campus like Northwestern, I feel like a lot of students really connect to, Ber to Bernie Sanders' uh, passion. And I feel that especially when they think about Donald Trump and they think about things that they don't like about Donald Trump, they also feel passion. And so there's all this passion around elections and around voting and around some of these issues that we see in the na on the national stage as well as on our Northwestern stage. And I really feel like because we were already in this mood, I think that that really drove people to vote more than they have in the past. And Quentin, can you weigh in on this? I mean, certainly people are focusing a lot on elections, largely because of Sanders' popularity, but also just in general, you know, it, it's strange to say, but becoming a social activist is almost in vogue right now. And so campaigns taking on a bit of that mantle for ASG is in many ways reflective not just of the election, but of the increasing popularity of social movements among people in our age. Okay, great. 
And as we saw throughout the campaign, Salento says her goal is to make Northwestern a safe space for the school's marginalized voices. Now, how does she plan to do that? Well, really, when you think about how the Christian Max campaign is focusing on marginalized students, you want to think about just their ticket in general. Max Vinson on the ticket, that is huge. As a vice presidential candidate, he's both a member of the African American community as well as of the LGBT community. These are voices that Christina and Max campaign call marginalized voices. So having that type of, uh, that leadership in the decision making process is essential to what their message is. Also, one of their uh, campaign platform points is to quote, unionize, not govern. And that means that they really want to develop programs that marginalized students can have a direct pipeline to voice their concerns to ASG. Some of these voices that they, they have felt in the past really have not been heard. They really want to make sure that there is a direct way for students to be able to do that, as well as having roundtable discussions with student groups, many of whom are centered around common interests that represent marginalized voices. Another core issue with the marginalized uh, voices in the Christina Max campaign is that a lot of students who are marginalized don't feel that they can connect with uh, employees, with staff, with professors here at Northwestern. They really want their professors to be able to empathize with them. And they feel sometimes that if I'm a marginalized voice and I go to my professor, he or she might not really understand the issues that I'm having, whatever they may be. So another, uh, one of the points in the Christina and Max platform is to make sure that students have a voice in the uh, in the hiring process, so that we can, so the ASG and the university can start to hire more people that represent those marginalized views. Okay, fantastic, great, Andrew. Thank you so much, uh, Quentin. We'll have more with you when we come back. At Northwestern, we're Wildcats in every way. Welcome back to Politicat. It's been an exciting presidential race so far, and the pool has narrowed down to five. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton face off on the Democratic side, while the Republicans are locked in a three-man heat with Donald Trump, Senator Ted Cruz, and Governor John Kasich fighting for the nomination. The next primary is a big one taking place in New York, where 247 delegates are up for grabs for the Democrats and 95 delegates are there for the Republicans. And let's focus on them right now. Donald Trump is still in the lead, but uh, with 479 delegates shy of what he would need to secure the nomination, and Ted Cruz isn't too far behind. Now, Trump's projected to win New York, but New York is not a winner-take-all state, and not a lot of the primaries left are. Quentin, what does that mean for Trump's delegate count going down the road? Well, it means his path is narrow. Trump needs to win more or less about 60% of the remaining delegates to capture the nomination outright. You know, some states are still winner-take-all that he has a big chance in. You know, states like New Jersey. That's a state where he was endorsed by the governor, albeit his gov the governor is not exactly popular right now. He has a lot of local support. Trump's likely to win New Jersey, but states like Nebraska, states like Montana, states like Delaware, those could go for Cruz, especially states like Nebraska. But one of the big issues with New York is the fact that it's divided up by congressional districts. So even though Trump is going to win big in New York, he's not guaranteed to capture all the delegates because Cruz or Kasich, more likely Kasich, has a chance of capturing at least some of those congressional district votes, especially in and around New York City. And Cruz and Kasich going forward, do either of those two have a realistic shot at the nomination? Uh, you ask both of them, they'll say yes. I think Cruz has the much stronger argument to make. He's won multiple states, including states where he hadn't been you know, an elected official for years. Kasich winning only in Ohio, getting a few second place finishes, but that's Marco Rubio territory, and we know how that turned out. It's likely to be a fight between Trump and Cruz at the convention if no candidate wins it outright before. 
Okay, and taking a look at the Democratic side now, Clinton's got a comfortable lead over Bernie Sanders with uh, 700 delegates roughly, but there are 1,900 or so still available. Is it likely that Hillary reaches that threshold to avoid a contested convention, or are we going to see a little bit of fighting on the Democratic side going forward? There is still going to be fighting, but I doubt that there's going to be a contested convention. Even if the Clinton campaign collapses, I think Bernie Sanders will win the majority necessary to go to Philadelphia as the winner outright. So if you want a contested convention, look to the Republicans, but the Democrats, you know, New York, Clinton seems favored, Pennsylvania, Clinton seems favored, Maryland, she's up in the polls. It doesn't look like the Sanders campaign has quite enough, despite an incredible run of recent victories, to be able to make it past that finish line. Okay, great. Thank you both so much for being here. And turning now to a more local Senate race, the race for the Illinois Senate seat opening up in November where Tammy Duckworth is challenging incumbent junior Senator Mark Kirk. Kirk first won the seat, formerly President Obama's in 2010, and Duckworth, a Democrat who currently serves as the House Representative from Illinois' 8th District, announced her campaign at the end of March. Both candidates are veterans. Kirk was an air-based naval intelligence officer in Yugoslavia, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and Duckworth served as an Army helicopter pilot in Iraq, where she lost both her legs in an attack by insurgents. Now, Kirk is also confined to a, wheel a wheelchair periodically since suffering a stroke in 2012. Though both candidates struggle with physical adversity every day, this race will really be a struggle of ideology. Kirk is a moderate Republican, fiscally conservative, but left-leaning on issues such as reproductive rights and gun laws. He recently gained the support of Human Rights Campaign, a prominent LGBTQ rights group, for his co-sponsorship of the Equality Act, which extends the Civil Rights Act of 1964 to prohibit discrimination based on sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Now, Duckworth has been an outspoken advocate of veterans' issues since her injury and served as the Assistant Secretary of Veterans Affairs before her House run. She was critical of the U.S. strategy in Iraq and has consistently voted in support of the Affordable Care Act. Now, stick with us as Politicat continues to be your source for coverage as the Senate race develops. And that's all we have for you tonight. Quentin, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. And be sure to follow them on Twitter. I'm Eric Miller, and this has been Politicat. Good night.